Hi, I'm Greg. I'm the Anthos GKE Security Tech Lead at Google. Hi, I'm Samrat Ray. I'm the Anthos Security Product Management Lead at Google. So today we're talking about Anthos Security. I wanted to start with the takeaways that we're going to get from this presentation. First up is we want you to be able to understand how Anthos improves security across a hybrid in production environment. The next is there's a lot of products and features in this presentation. There's about 30 of them. So we want to make sure that we're being really obvious and deliberate about wh where each feature is available and which environment and on which platform it's available. But really, the, the high-level thing we want to leave you with here is a four-step high-level workflow to configure Anthos security across multiple different platforms. Just a quick note on names. Uh, we've shortened some of the names in this presentation just to make things a bit easier to say and to fit them on diagrams. So we're using GKE for Anthos on Google Cloud. This presentation is called Modernize Your Security Posture. So what's being modernized and what industry trends are driving that? We think there's these, these three things are happening. First is there's not just one production security infrastructure to harden anymore. There's multiple. There's on-prem and there's multiple clouds. Second, Kubernetes and containers have really changed a lot about our security assumptions about production infrastructure. So previously, we might have had an application running on a virtual machine with always the same IP, whereas in Kubernetes and containers, we have applications being dynam dynamically scaled, scheduled across different virtual machines, and with dynamically allocated IPs. And that's quite a difference to, in security properties. We also have these big monoliths that have been broken down into microservices. And all of those microservices now need authentication and authorization to be able to talk to each other. And that needs to happen inside the perimeter. So this is where Anthos really starts to come in and help. If we look at the, this hybrid infrastructure where we have clusters running on Google Cloud, other clouds, and on-prem, the four points at the top are, are really where Anthos is helping you. At the infrastructure level, at a separate policy layer with services and application security and with monitoring and detection. And so we took those four kind of concepts and we turned them into these four steps that you can use to harden applications and, and get to uh, secure deployments across a hybrid infrastructure. So the first step we're going to talk, to, talk through is hardening. How do you do patching, compliance, hardened configuration? Next, guardrails. How do you segment, isolate, and apply that policy across lots of clusters? Securing workloads, how do you only run what you trust and have really fine-grained authorization? And monitoring detection, once you've done all of that, how do you find misconfigurations and detect attackers doing bad things to clusters? We want to be able to do these four things across all of your different environments. So let's start with hardening the infrastructure. And the spoiler for this section is, We've basically done most of this for you, but we're going to talk through a whole lot of work that's happening behind the scenes so that you know that it's happening. So starting with security patching and hardening, if we look at a big stack of technology for Kubernetes clusters, everything from the hardware right up to application containers, each one of these layers at some point probably needs security patching, and it definitely needs hardening. So when we're running on our own infrastructure with GKE, We've basically taken the responsibility for most of that technology stack. For an Anthos that isn't GKE, so on-prem and AWS, we're starting a little further up because we're running on that infrastructure that the customer has provided. So the, the VMs running on-prem or the virtual machines running in AWS or other clouds. So it's more of a responsibility sandwich, we like to call this one, uh, but we're still doing a lot of work in the middle there. So where we do control that infrastructure on GKE, we can deliver some pretty cool advanced security functionality that's on by default or is exposed with really simplified configuration. So some of the things we're doing, moving from the bottom up in this diagram, uh, the first thing we'll talk about is shielded VMs and nodes. So these features give us verifiable integrity from our Titan hardware security chip, uh, the integrity of the, the underlying uh, firmware and uh, up through the kernel. And then we have the virtual TPM that gives us a secure bootstrap and a way to join the node to the cluster uh, securely. 
Customer managed encryption keys for disk encryption. So every VM is encrypted automatically by default in Google Cloud with a key that is managed by Google internally. If you want to re-encrypt that VM again, re-encrypt the disk again, you can do that using uh, managed encryption keys that you store in Cloud KMS. And a similar feature for Kubernetes secrets, you can encrypt Kubernetes secrets using a Cloud KMS managed key as well. The control plane and the node, the cluster infrastructure itself, automatically upgrades itself uh, by default on GKE. So if you create a cluster and just leave it there and do nothing to it, it'll just keep upgrading itself and keep itself in a, in a good secure, uh, security configuration. We also offer some control over how those upgrades happen. We have different release channels that rapid, regular, and stable that you can choose to, to really sort of dial up or down how quickly those updates are happening on your clusters. There's also additional features like maintenance windows and exclusions. So let's talk a little bit about compliance, starting with the Kubernetes CIS benchmark. So the Center for Internet Security has created a Kubernetes benchmark that tells you how to run Kubernetes in a, in a hardened configuration. There's really a lot of settings in, in this benchmark. And we've done the hard work to uh, configure all those settings uh, to in uh, the best possible way. And we've published our full results for GKE and for on-prem. We've also developed a GKE-specific CIS benchmark that basically just takes our hardening guide and uh, gives, gives you that in a checklist form. The infrastructure itself, we've had a bunch of compliance coverage there, so uh, various standards listed here. This is for GKE. We're also working on compliance coverage for infrastructure in the other hybrid environments that we're offering, and we expect to make some more announcements there soon. That's the infrastructure layer. The next layer up, when you want to build an application that is itself compliant, uh, we've, we're then uh, providing some solution guides, such as for PCI, for GKE, that basically help you write that PCI application on top of GKE infrastructure. And we're also working on additional guides for additional platforms and standards here too. So summing up this section, Anthos really does most of the work for you here across all of the platforms. If you follow our guidelines for multi-tenancy on GKE, there's a, there's a bit of extra information in there about how to structure projects, how to put them in folders, and how to create VPCs. For on-prem and GKE, you can then follow the hardening guides to create the clusters themselves. And on top of that, follow solution guides to make the applications uh, that run in the clusters. All the links are provided here. So once you've made some clusters and have some infrastructure to use, you really want to establish some guardrails around that infrastructure to make sure it's being used appropriately. The really key feature here is Anthos Config Management. And this gives us the ability to manage cross-cluster and cross-cloud a lot of different policies. And the idea here is, is to use a, a GitOps model where our infrastructure as code is, is really checked into our source control. So the idea there is that when we're using source control to manage infrastructure, we have automatic review, we have a history, we have a way to templatize and create new um, pieces of infrastructure easily. So looking at how this works on uh, for Anthos, We'd use Terraform to make the, the kind of base layer of infrastructure of things like projects and VPCs and clusters. And then the next layer is where ACM comes in. So ACM Config Sync is generally available across uh, all three Anthos platforms here. And that gives you the ability to create namespaces, configure RBAC, uh, security controls, and also create identities through service accounts and really actually manage any Kubernetes object at scale across many clusters, across all the hybrid environments here. You can also go even further. And if you like the declarative uh, kind of config as code approach, you can use it to also create uh, your GCP resources using GCP config connector. And the idea here is that you, if you want to, if your application needs a pub sub instance, you could write a piece of YAML that goes along with all of your other YAMLs for Kubernetes. Uh, and you can cube control, cube control apply all of those uh, at once and have both the pods started as well as the GCP resources that those applications need. That's also GA across GKE and on-prem. So ACM 
config sync kind of sets us up in this sort of base infrastructure security configuration. Policy controller is a feature that also works across all three environments here, and it allows us to really control what the pods are doing inside that, that cluster. So the idea here is you want to make sure that containers aren't doing things like running as root, aren't accessing the host network, aren't accessing the host, uh, host paths, and doing other dangerous things. So we give you a really comprehensive policy library that you can apply to your clusters. And that policy library, there's an example here of uh, not running as root. That policy library is written using uh, Open Policy Agents Gatekeeper. Uh, so a, a open source policy language. So both of those features are available across on uh, all the environments to use today. They're all GA. There's a couple of extra things we can talk about on GKE when you're running on GKE itself. The first is org policies. So org policies sit above all of your clusters, above all of your projects, and they allow you to have some, like a macro policy control across many objects. So one thing you can do is restrict regions for resources. So if you just want to run in the US, you can make an org policy that says that for Google Cloud. Another thing you can do for your Kubernetes clusters is to restrict how services are exposed to the internet. Most organizations want to avoid someone accidentally putting a untested or a kind of poorly configured application accidentally on the internet. And this is a way to make sure that doesn't happen uh, with your GKE clusters. Another guardrail technology on GKE Cloud is VPC service controls. This technology allows us to have some confidence that when we put some information in cloud storage or other uh, similar cloud uh, resources on GCP, that it's not going to easily be exfiltrated by a bad guy. So there's a few scenarios that it protects against. Imagine uh, someone accidentally messing up a access control rule on a cloud storage bucket and making it public for everyone to read. The VPC would still protect that scenario because there's a perimeter around there that says those cloud storage buckets should only be accessed from authorized VPCs. In a similar fashion, if one of your compute resources happened to get compromised, uh, the data wouldn't. Be, it wouldn't. Uh, it would also uh, make it more difficult to exfiltrate that data out from the out from the cloud by est establishing the same perimeter and only allowing the traffic to flow out on the authorized VPCs. So private GKE clusters uh, can be established inside the perimeter, so they're not on the internet. You can also uh, as do the same with a container registry or with the, your container images. And VPC service controls supports hybrid in that you can connect your hybrid uh, on-prem networks by using cloud interconnect or cloud VPN. So just summing up this section, uh, we want to use ACM to do the vast majority of our policy configuration and enforcement across our hybrid infrastructure. And then on GKE Cloud, we have some extra controls that we can use to uh, do, establish some extra guardrails. So that's, uh, that's the end of the uh, guardrail section. I'm now going to hand it over to Samrat to talk about how to secure our workloads. Thanks, Greg. We have now covered how to configure a secure infrastructure and set up guardrails. You are now ready to deploy workloads to this secure landing zone. Let us look at how you can secure workloads with Anthos. Anthos provides tools to implement a defense in depth architecture or a zero trust architecture, if you like. We, we have provided here four steps that you can use to secure workloads on Anthos. The first being the securing your build and deployment pipelines, ensuring that, that your entire supply chain for your code from source to your production is secure. The second is to ensure that all workloads deployed to production are appropriately isolated from the internet and from each other within your production environment. You should also isolate your pods on the node if multiple applications are deployed on a single cluster. Lastly, you want to ensure that services that are exposed to the internet are done so with appropriate protection against internet facing attacks. So let's go through the first step which is to secure workloads. 
the objective of securing workloads is to ensure that only trusted code can be deployed to production. To ensure that, we recommend you lock down your CI CD pipelines, ensure that you use a secure base image, scan that base built image for known vulnerabilities. Google Cloud's container registry provides incremental and continuous monitoring against a known vulnerability database. The output of the scans are available as metadata with your pod. The fact that you have gone through all the above steps can be asserted using binary authorization. Binary authorization allows you to define a policy that checks for attestation from each step of your build pipeline. You can leverage the tools provided by GCP for building and deploying your containers, or you can bring your own build and deployment tools as long as you, they have attestors that are trusted by binary authorization. Only workloads that have the right attestations can be deployed to production. All deployment and denials are audited by binary authorization. You can now trust the code running in production with a privileged identity. The next step is to isolate the deployed code from the internet. This can be achieved by ensuring that all clusters are private and any service that is exposed to the internet is done so using an internet facing load balancer. Google Cloud's load balancer provides industry leading DDoS protection. Further, you can configure web application firewall policies via Cloud Armor. You can also configure zero trust access uh, by your employees using Identity Aware Proxy. In addition to isolating the applications from the internet, it is also necessary to isolate workloads from each other to prevent the lateral movement of threats. We need to prevent lateral movements over the network but also between pods on the same node. Anthos provides two technologies, Anthos Service Mesh and Kubernetes Network Policy to isolate workloads on the network. Anthos also provides two technologies, GKE Sandbox and App Armor to isolate applications on the node. Let's learn more about these technologies. A common approach with Anthos is to create clusters that are shared across multiple teams. Each team gets one or more namespaces into which they deploy their application workloads. Thus, namespaces form a natural boundary for isolation. Kubernetes network policy allows you to isolate applications on a single cluster based on namespaces. You can then define ingress and egress rules based on IP sitters or Kubernetes objects, such as namespaces and labels. This approach is, may, can be called as micro segment micro-segmentation. It's a good approach if you don't have too many exceptions to manage. However, in many cases, we have seen through experience that there are a lot of east-west communications between applications, and we implement shared services which break isolation. Thus, we recommend using coarse-grained segments for mandatory controls and defining fine-grained policies at the application level. So you can define application level policies and an end-to-end -end zero trust access solution using Anthos Service Mesh and Identity Aware Proxy. With Anthos Service Mesh, all communications are encrypted in transit. Further, all workload to workload communications can be strongly authenticated, authorized, and logged. Workloads are authenticated using certificates instead of bearer tokens. Using mutual TLS for authentication helps mitigate the risk of impersonation and privilege escalation through replay or man-in-the-middle attacks. ASM also provides you uh, with context-aware policies that allows you to define access controls based on peer request and application contexts. For example, you can state that only credit card front-end can access credit card back-end. You do this in terms of identities. Thus, credit card front end can be deployed anywhere and access policy remains the same irrespective of the network context of credit card front end. You can also state that credit card front end can only access PII when it presents an end user credential, i.e. 
a valid JWT token that has the right claims. Thus, with Anto Service Mesh, you can reduce the privilege of the credit card front end with respect to PII, but also ensure that all access to credit card data happens only through the credit card front end. On GCP, we provide identity aware proxy for authenticating and authorizing user access based on beyond cop principles. You can also use your own user authentication solution that with Anthos Service Mesh. And you can do all of this without changing your application code. Depending on your security profile and what your application is, you might want a second layer of isolation between your container workloads on a shared host. Anthos provides two solutions for isolating pods on a shared node. The first one is GKE Sandbox, which is available on GCP. And the second is App Armor, which is now in beta, but is available on all environments. GKE Sandbox is based upon an open source project, GVisor, that uses a user space kernel to intercept and handle syscalls. Thus, you're reducing the interaction with the host and reducing the attack surface. We have now made this available to you in Anthos as a GKE Sandbox, which can be enabled with a one-line change. You can, with App Armor, on the other hand, you can define the and reduce the privileges accessible by an application. You need to define application-specific profiles with App Armor. So let us now look at summary of this section. So we provide a defense in depth approach to secure your workloads from securing your build and deployment pipelines to isolating your applications on the network. And we can do that with a defense in depth approach using segmentation and a zero trust approach with Anthos Service Mesh and isolating your pods on a shared node. And finally, we provide you the ability to protect your internet exposed services using Google Cloud Load Balancer and Cloud Armor. Now let us look at the fourth step to secure your applications with Anthos. The fourth step is to enable monitoring and detection for any incidents. Now you have done your best to configure everything securely, but how do you know you did it right? In order to know that, we provide you with the three layered stack going from the bottom, we provide you with security, health analytics, and web security scanner that analyzes your configuration to prevent threats because of a misconfiguration. The layer above that is a set of threat detection capabilities, which is the container threat detection, event threat detection, and access transparency. Access transparency enables you to understand how a Google administrator may have accessed your resources. And all of this information is available through a single pane of glass via, via the Cloud Security Command Center. If you want to bring your own visibility tools, we allow you to do that. And you can integrate those tools at two levels. You can export all your alerts, events, and logs that you need via PubSub for easy integration and use your own security visibility and analysis tools with Anthos. So let's understand a bit more about security health analytics. Security health analytics helps prevent threats by telling you about problems before they get exploited by an attacker. SHA alerts you to misconfiguration errors um, in the context of GKE. Um, an example is an old cluster running an insecure authentication mechanism. We also provide web security scanner, uh, which identifies issues with web applications. The results of the analysis are displayed in Cloud Security Command Center. Another tool to understand is the container threat detection tool. Container threat detection uh, helps you detect potential attacks in real time that um, by monitoring for suspicious behavior inside containers that may indicate that they are compromised. These include things like downloading and running new binaries. In addition to container threat detection, we also provide event threat detection for suspicious events and logs, um, such as traffic to known bad domains and IPs and crypto mining. Again, you can see the findings in Cloud Security Command Center. To summarize this section, 
On GCP, we provide a number of tools to help you analyze your posture and detect incidents. This information is available in Cloud Security Command Center or a tool of your choice. You can view all your alerts in the Cloud Security Command Center. And to recap what we have just covered, there are four steps to securing your modern applications using Anthos. You harden your infrastructure. You then establish guardrails. Once you have a secured landing zone, you can now secure your workloads by uh, securing your deployment pipelines and isolating your workloads in your production environment. And finally, you enable monitoring and detection to ensure that you have the right posture and that you are alerted on incidents. And you can enable this four-step workflow across all your environments, whether it's GCP or on-premise, on AWS, and others in the future. Thank you.